Let's test how various Milwaukee M12 batteries are able to provide power to a tool. The batteries that we're going to look at include the Milwaukee CP 2.0, the CP 3.0, the new and improved high output CP 2.5, the XC 4.0, a bit of an older battery, and a new battery, the new and improved XC 5.0 high output. We are going to see how much power these batteries are putting into this tool here. And this tool is an impact driver. It's the second generation model 2553. In order to evaluate how much power is being put into this tool, we're going to use my M12 line splitter. I demonstrated this in an earlier video. And basically what you do is you take an amp meter, a clamp meter, and you attach it. And it gives you real time amp draw by the tool. Since those earlier videos, I've added a couple banana jacks, and these banana jacks will allow us to attach a multimeter. We can monitor voltage. Voltage multiplied by amperage, uh, that gives us real-time power in watts. Now, the first test that I'm going to need to do is to evaluate what conditions draw the most amount of power. Now, to evaluate that, I have some self-feed bits, a rather aggressive three fluted models, and we are going to evaluate under what conditions this tool draws the most power. Yeah, you might think that the biggest uh, bit would draw the greatest power, but that might not necessarily be the case because speed goes down. With the smaller bits, that uh, drives faster. Well, let's find out. Let's not forget safety first. Plug your ears at home. Got the 5 amp hour battery. Get my clamp meter in place, so it's on DC. Starting with a 5 8 self-feed bit. And here we go. Next up is 7 8 And lastly, 1 and a quarter. And now she'll be putting out full nut bust and twerk on a seized fastener. Mostly seized. Okay, let's try putting this in a vise and see if I can get it completely seized this time. And I gotta get a second camera out. Okay, here we go. Nope. Okay, first test results are in off of this high output 5.0 battery. And the thing that we find is that power output to this tool is relatively constant under, well, what is really a decent workout in all the test scenarios that I did. Uh, the difference in output only was less than 20%. Uh, for instance, this small bit required only about 5% less power and then these two larger bits, a small bit was spinning a lot faster and was moving a lot quicker. What was interesting was that the uh, nearly seized faster was only about 10% more power than the largest self-feed bit. is isn't really completely seized because, well, the washers that I have here, they start to cup and uh, the screw, the, uh, well, it's stretched the fuck out. Anyways... I would like to test it under maximum power, which would be this uh, nearly stressed out screw. I'm not sure that would be repeatable, however, because I don't have very many screws and, well, exactly what's going on here, metal fatigue, etc. That's not exactly repeatable. For future measurements, I am going to be looking at this one and a quarter self-feed bit. I had attempted to completely seize this uh, impact driver uh, by driving this tool in a vise. However, that was a no-go. The reason why is pretty simple. This tool puts out 1,300 inch-pounds of torque. And I should have known better by, well, I looked it up eventually, the amount of uh, sheer force that these uh, little tool steel bits will take. It's about half of the output of this tool. I find that kind of amusing. They talk about the nut-busting twerk of these tools, but it's actually uh, considerably more than uh, not just the nut, but, well, the tool bit that fits into this quarter-inch hex aperture. Anyways, let's continue the tests with this one-and-a-quarter-inch bit and now examine 
all of these five different batteries. Okay, all the batteries are fully charged. They are lit green. CP2. CP3. High output CP2.5. XC 4.0 And lastly, the high output XC 5.0 And the results are in. What did we find? First of all, my CP 2.0 battery might be not long for this world. Uh, its voltage is a little bit low. I took it out and I discharged it, I recharged it, and it's still reporting a little bit on the low side, so I'm not sure whether the results from this 2.0 battery are very uh, valid. However, the rest of the battery seem to be in pretty good condition. They all have uh, equal starting voltages. And what did we find? We found for power delivery, this CP 2.5 high output battery really does the job of putting out more watts into this tool than this other CP battery, the CP3, by about 11%. The XC 4.0 does a good job of putting out power. It puts out more power than this uh, high output cell, but that's not surprising because the, uh, the cells inside, they're paralleled up. But if you want maximum power delivery, this high output XC 5.0 really does rule the roost. It puts out 10% more power than this XC4. It puts out 15% more power than the CP high output 2.5. And puts out a ton more power than, the, uh, than these older batteries. Anyways, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed this video looking at the amount of juice that these uh, high output batteries put out. Hey, that gives me an idea for the name for the series. Anyway, stay tuned. I'm going to run some similar tests on other uh, tools, other Milwaukee M12 tools. Thanks for watching.